Let's come here. Okay, hello and welcome to the um, the last November. I think I I had something small we did in the in this group in early November, but welcome to the November um, author salon. And we have Mark Leslie Lefebvre today, who has come in before and talked to us about. Um, the basics of using draft to digital platform. And today is going to talk to us about um, book formatting. And let me just read his bio for you real quick. Mark's first short story appeared in print in 1992, the same year he started working in the book industry. He has published more than 25 books under the name Mark Leslie that include thrillers, fiction, um, paranormal nonfiction and anthologies. Under his full name, he writes books to help authors navigate publishing. And they include The Seven P's of Publishing Success and, author, and An Author's Guide to Working with Libraries and Bookstores. His industry experience includes uh, president of the Canadian Booksellers Association, board members of BookNet Canada, direct, director of author relations and self-publishing for uh, Rakut and Kobo, um, and Director of Business Development for Draft to Digital and Professional Advisor for Sheridan College, and I hope that's right, Sheridan College's Creative Writing and Publishing Honors Program. Um, Mark lives in Waterloo and Ontario and can be found at www.marklesley.ca. And um, we are so thankful to have you here again, uh, Mark Leslie, uh, giving us some of your wisdom about the book publishing, especially for us uh, self-publishers and um, indie publishing authors. And I'm going to turn it over to Mark to talk about stuff and then um, about book um, formatting. And then when he's ready, he'll have a question and answer portion. Also, you can, and so you don't forget, if you have a question you're worried you could forget it, you can put it in the chat. And at the end, we'll just go through the chat and make sure that everybody got their question and answer, especially if you don't want to verbally tell us <laughs> what it is, you can just put it in the chat and we'll read it, okay? Thank you again, uh, Mark Leslie, for coming in and presenting to us. We appreciate it so much. Oh, thanks, Heather. So I'm going to jump right into um, the presentation. And then that way we can sort of get to questions at the end. Uh, so let me see. So you should be able to see um, digital book formatting, tips, tricks, hacks, and ideas. And I think, let's see, next slide. We've already gone through this, so we don't really need to go through my biography, et cetera. I just want to start off to make sure that you understand. These are just four of the choices. I wanted to highlight two of what I think are two of the best paid formatting tools and this is for ebooks or print and two of the main free formatting tools that are completely 100 free uh and that's readsy and draft to digital i'm, I'm just going to kind of walk through them just to give you and again these are four of many possibilities these just tend to be the ones that are the most popular so vellum is probably in the indie author community the most well known but the biggest caveat for vellum is if you don't own a Mac, you're out of luck. <laughs> um, Brad and Brad, the two guys who are the developers behind Vellum, wanted to make the best tool possible, but did not want to make it for multiple platforms. I, as a PC user, have tried it using Mac and Cloud, and it is not a very good experience. <laughs> it almost is worth it. There are some authors who've just purchased an overexpensive Mac computer just so they can get access to Vellum. But if you have Vellum, you pretty much all you you have all you need in terms of making EPUBs and even print ready documents. So this is just sort of a, a, a sort of a screenshot that shows you a little bit of what it looks like. You can create books for multiple platforms. You can make EPUB threes, EPUB twos, and it doesn't matter if you don't know what those are. That's fine. That's the beauty of this. And uh, you you uh, import your Word document. And as you can see here, you can pick pretty headers, et cetera. There's a few templates that they have. If it's part of a series, they can take multiple um, uh, EPUBs that you've created and make make a box set out of them. Um, as you can see, this is a format for a print book that they've done. Uh, they have 14 different trim sizes. They have large print uh, trim size available. So you can easily make a regular size book and a large print book. Um, and and they will spit out a professional grade PDF 
uh, or a PDF X dash I one uh, a <laughs> is the format that most of the formatters prefer. Um, you can do things like drop caps, embedded fonts, flourishes. You can even import images that you can use as a, as a background spread. Now just be aware that that's, more advanced uh, in terms of stuff that you're going to want to do is you see the little uh, the dock here. And that's something that not everyone's going to want to do, because sometimes if you if you don't if you don't fade it in the background uh, well enough that it kind of appears the text. But this is good news because it's, it's Cyber Monday. If you do have a Mac and you're thinking about Vellum right now is the best time to get it because you can get Vellum Press, which is unlimited eBooks and paperbacks, is normally two hundred and fifty US dollars. Um, it's currently on for one hundred and seventy five. Wow! Or or eBook only um, is is normally two hundred dollars, uh, or for one hundred and forty dollars, and that ends December fifth, twenty twenty two. So if you're watching the recording of this, sorry if it's after December fifth, but um, they'll have sales like this every once in a while. They might have one uh, post Christmas as well. But that's just uh, for Vellum. Now, Atticus.io is, and that's the the URL to find it, is 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 newer. And this is Dave Chesson, and you may recognize the Publisher Rocket or KDP Rocket logo on 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 the shirts of of him and a couple of the senior members of his team. But he's the genius behind Publisher Rocket, and just in the last year and a half. He released Atticus, and this is an online-based tool, and it was meant to be an answer for people who don't necessarily have a Mac or didn't want to use Vellum. You can It works on, on all platforms, so Windows, Mac, Linux, or even on Chromebooks, you can use it. And you can actually write your books in Atticus as well if you want to. You've got this online format. As you can see, very similar styles that you can get out of Vellum. You can kind of see your stuff over on the left-hand side, the table of contents. And again, you can write right in there. You can import and use it for formatting. So again, you put you can put your book right in there. You can upload and then just use it for formatting. This is just an example. If you were using it as as um, uh, writing it in in it in the platform itself, you could even set your book goals like for Nano Rimo or whatever your word count, etc. So that. It was meant to just kind of be not just a place to upload a Word document, but if you wanted to write inside the app, it's built for that as well. And again, you can upload your book or you can write it in the platform. Uh, it can be a Word document. It could be a Scrivener document. Scrivener is a great tool for formatting and outlining, et cetera, or even a rich rich text uh, document uh, as well. You just import it into Atticus. You kind of choose the look and feel. There's a whole bunch of templates. There's 17 of them. And I guess there's 1,200 different combinations. And there's themes you can do so you can start to customize things along the way. You can kind of see what it would look like on different devices. This is a preview, for example, on an iPad. And there are eight different <laughs> devices you can kind of see what it might look like in different formats. And then Atticus has this really handy comparison to Vellum. Um, and, and what you can see is for $147, and that's the regular price, you can get ebook and print. Um, they uh, volumes and parts are coming soon, and version control are coming soon. But there's quite a bit of flexibility, and it's very, very comparable. So a lot of people like me, who don't have a Mac, uh, have been able to use Atticus with a lot less frustration, etc. Now, um, for an online tool, very similar to Atticus, has been out for a lot, uh, a, a lot more years. It's probably not as um, robust as Atticus, but it's free. And this is Readsy, uh, via readsy.com. There's an online editing tool. And the cool thing about this is it's been out for a, a while. Like Atticus, you can write right in the tool. You could also use it for collaboration with an editor where you can actually, you know, like in track changes in Word, you can actually kind of see what's going on and comments and things like that that your editor is doing and even see that in real time if you happen to both be in the document at the same time and of course you can export that to epub or to pdf and and again the two main formats the only formats to consider and i'm not going to get into audiobooks right now but the only formats to consider when you think about books um is uh, epub which is an ebook and pdf and there used to be one called moby 
uh, which was Amazon's proprietary EPUB. Uh, and they're, they're kind of um, retiring that. So technically, PDF goes to print, EPUB is how you make an ebook. Now, again, uh, they're, they're touting the fact that you don't need to do it in Word and then transfer it over there. You can do it right in Readsy. For me, it hasn't been that much of a good experience, so I, I haven't used it all. I've done some copying and pasting and stuff like that. This is just an example of what you can see if if you've got John and Mary who are collaborating or you know Mary's editing John's work, et cetera, you can kind of see where um, where they are in the document. And again, you can export the files and have a file that's ready to go uh, for print in PDF or EPUB for ebook. The other thing about Readsy is Readsy does is a platform that helps you find other professionals. Uh, and those are paid uh, professionals, but you can find curated professionals for uh, editorial uh, book cover design. And, and I'm talking about book cover design, like actual fancy design, not formatting of the book, but the actual designer that would design the pretty uh, but gorgeous uh, cover that you want for your book. Um, and then draft to digital, of course, uh, which I'm obviously very biased towards. draft to digital.com uh, has the free tool where you can upload a Word document and uh, kind of go through the same sort of process. And, and you can get both an EPUB and a PDF out of that. So this is just sort of an example. Um, <clears throat> again, the cool thing about this is, yes, draft to digital is a distribution platform. But you can make your ebook there, take the ebook file away, and you don't even need to use Draft to Digital for publishing if you don't want to. It's there if you want it, but uh, you don't have to. There's 21 uh, templates available. <laughs> and I'm going to show you some examples of those. And like I said, there's no obligation. You can kind of use them. Now, when it comes to print, um, there, there's, two, there's two different ways. You can get a, a, a simple PDF. But in terms of D2D &D print distribution, there's a lot more power there uh, that you're getting uh, for free, but you do have to use them for distribution for print. This is an example of what a book might look like on your draft to digital dashboard. This is one of my last uh, collaborative novels. And so if you click on uh, ebook, e you would upload your Word document here. This is where you put in your details, the release date, synopsis, et cetera, is below that. But you click, click that. And you upload the Word document. And this is just a, a screenshot of my Word document just to kind of show you. I've got prologue and a header and, and my text, which is just basic text. And then when I load it, uh, this screen will come up and it will show me the breakdown of my chapters. And if I didn't put my own title page, let's say, now I, I've been in the industry a long time. So when I formatted my book in uh, Word, I, I did the copyright page and the title page and the dedication and all that stuff. But oftentimes, let's just say you just have the full manuscript, title, name, chapter one, go. You could, draft a digital will allow you at this point, if you click on title page, it'll create a title page for you. And I'll ask you the details of what you want on the title page. It'll create a copyright page for you. It'll insert a dedication. Who do you want to dedicate this to? And then at the end, they can create end matter for you. Um, so this is the front matter, the title page, copyright dedication. But then there's the promotional pages. Also buy a li links to your other books, a new release email notification for the ebook so that people can click it and be notified when you release a new book. A teaser. Hey, if you like this book by Mark Leslie, check out this other book by Mark Leslie with a cover and the synopsis you can also insert about the author and about the publisher, but you can preview once you load it and say, Hey, these are the chapters of the book. Great. Everything looks good. But what happens if you don't, if you upload a, a word document and it doesn't look right, like, Oh, in this particular case, it does look right. Chapter one, chapter two, chapter three, but what if chapter two wasn't there? Oh no, what happened? Where's chapter two? What probably happened is chapter one and chapter two rolled together because it's a dumb computer and it's automatically, what it's done is it's taken your Word document and it's tried to translate your Word document into saying, I think this is where the new chapter is. So if if you when you upload to draft to digital, uh, it doesn't look the way you expect it to. If those aren't the chapters, the way that you set out your chapters, you click on the help, these aren't my chapters button. This little pop-up will happen. It'll take between one to two minutes <clears throat> and it will give you some options. And, and, and at that point, it reminds you, 
hey, it's just a stupid computer. If you um, if you consistently set up your chapter titles and consistently format them a certain way, like they're always larger text or bold or centered or whatever, it may have an easier time identifying them. But this is the cool thing that I love about draft to digital and not a lot of people picked, have picked up on this, is this, this pops up. And over on the left, it says, okay, if we use bold centered larger text and we look for bold centered larger text, here's what your chapter layout would look like. You'd have the title page, you'd have an introduction, then you'd have a bookmark, Leslie. Obviously, that's not all the chapters. Okay, if we just go with centered larger text. Okay, we're getting a little bit better. Okay, what about bold and centered? Oh, no, that doesn't do it. Okay, what would centered give me? And so, as you can see, there's a little scroll bar over on the right. And you can check out other formats and go, what about bold larger text? Okay, that's now looking like my chapters. And you can see, you can pull this down and see if it has all the chapters. Larger text, bold, embedded. So it gives you a bunch of choices. And if that does, if none of them work, this is where you go back to your Word document and they do recommend going back and maybe actually check it. So for example, having all new chapters um, formatted with header one in a Word document works, but sometimes all you, need, all you need to do is make it larger text and centered or, or whatever. And again, if I go back to centered larger text, something like that. And again, you're telling the stupid computer, okay, look for this and that's where my chapter breaks are. And that's a really fantastic tool that um, can remove some of the frustration when you go, well, what's going on? Um, now the, the challenge there is you've got to go back, you, you revise the Word document, you save it, upload it again and go back through the process. So that can take a few passes before you get that right, but it does put the power in your hands. Then, once you're satisfied that the chapters are fine, very similar to some of those other tools. So you can see over on the right-hand side, uh, you've got the title of this chapter uh, is a short story collection, Active Reader. And you can see this is using D2D Simple. And there's nothing fancy about the format. Um, over here, you can see in the bottom, this is where if I'm happy, I can download. can still get the Mobi format, even though that's not really being used much anymore by Kindle. Uh, download the EPUB or download a PDF version of the book. Again, this PDF version is kind of like a really, really light, uh, not necessarily best for print, but it gets you there a little bit closer than you would be without it. Now, this is an example of the corner decoration style, which I've highlighted here. And I've also selected drop caps. So you can see that uh, now I did, I did actually enter uh, uppercase for the first three words in the chapter. So I can't fix that here. I'd have to go back to the Word document. But when I toggle on and off uh, drop cap, you see the drop cap appears there. This is an example of textbook style, just very plain. So again, so you're looking at, uh, this looks more like uh, you know, a print book. This is just more chunky without the, without the drop cap. Um, and then if I do a different style here, this is an example under romance for midnight oil. I really love the coffee mug. I mean, it says romance, but I could use that for anything because coffee and books, right? Uh, and again, you can kind of see there's different uh, formats for mystery and science fiction, nonfiction. Poetry is one of the recent templates added because poetry, sometimes you want it to be formatted a certain way and you don't want the stupid computer to override it. So poetry gives you a lot more leeway for that. Then um, when you move over to print, this is an example of what the print layout would look like, uh, which is just a different uh, tab when you're setting up your book. And so this is an example of the preview of what it would look like. And it shows the paper color cream. If I change that to white, it's obviously going to give it a, more of a white background. The various trim sizes. And again, I can choose the different template styles, very similar to the template styles you saw here. Uh, some of them will have the, the fancy things in the corner, et cetera. Um, and, and then page numbers and headering uh, headers you can say numbered pages will start here. The header text location will be top, bottom, uh, chapter page number location, uh, where it is. And then if you click on chapters and scenes, you can have all the chapters start on the right-hand page or not. You can toggle that on or off. And under the body text, you can control whether or not it automatically uh, hyphenates for you. And you can create widow control and orphan control, different sensitivities. Obviously, up to five 
down to low. It's defaulting just closer to the lower sensitivity range. And, and then that way, without having to understand uh, book formatting, you can use that. Now, if you have a book already formatted, you can just upload the PDF and you're good to go. But if you don't, this is great because it can save you hundreds of dollars with a book designer. <coughs> For the front cover, one of the cool things about D2D print is this is an example of a book where I just loaded the front cover. Very rudimentary. Drafted Digital automatically creates the cover wrap for me based on the trim size. And it allows me the ability to change the background color. It automatically assigns a, uh, the color most commonly associated with the front cover. So it makes a seamless wrap. I can toggle on and off the trim line so I can see where the trim is. And I can change the text. I can change the font size and the style. I can move the, I can change the upper spine text, the lower spine text. I can even add a publisher icon to the lower logo uh, of the spine if I wanted to. And uh, and there is an option in the advanced settings of whether or not I wanted to upload my own. Um, if I uploaded my own cover, I could put my own barcode, but it'll automatically assign a barcode to your book. And that'd be based on the ISBN you entered. Or if you didn't enter an ISBN, it'll give you an ISBN for free and make the barcode for you either way. So that's kind of that's kind of it in a nutshell. Um, whoops, if I go back to this is just um, my contact information and QA. I wanted to kind of share those options with you, and I'm hoping uh, you guys have some uh, questions um, that I can answer. Um, I didn't see anything in the chat, but. Are there specific questions about formatting that people were hoping to talk about? So if you have a question, just go ahead and unmute and I will see that you wanna ask a question. I want to say that I am super impressed with draft to digitals walkthrough of all of the things you should, I mean, in the beginning for me, just even knowing all of the parts of a book that should be there was hard. Like, yeah. Front matter, back matter. You know, <laughs> like, what copyright. is that? What do I put on the copyright page, right? <laughs> oh, <Yeah. laughs> and just remembering all the pieces. So I freaking love that. It makes it so easy. Um, does anybody have any questions? I see um, uh, Kay McCoy does. Please go ahead. Uh, hi. Thank you guys again for this amazing uh, webinar. But I, I have one question. Um, for those of us that use Draft to Digital to uh, have uh post anthologies how yeah. would we go about doing formatting for that if everyone has like their own table of contents and dedication page is that the same process well, as with, with the book or are you doing a traditional anthology where you're the editor and everyone submits a short story to you yeah <laughs> okay so i mean ideally they're not submitting a full book they're submitting a short story to you right yes that's right Ten thousand right. words is the max <laughs> 10,000 word stories each. Okay, so the cool thing, uh, Kay, is uh, for anthologies draft to digital, you can use payment splitting. I don't know if you mm -hmm. saw that on Lover's Moon. Mm -hmm. uh, and and are, you, are you familiar with payment splitting? Yes, I, I've been doing okay. a little bit of research. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Because I use it all the time because I'm Canadian. And one of my well, co-author in the UK, I have another co-author mm -hmm. in the US. I don't want to take the money and lose money when I have to exchange it and figure out and take mm -hmm. my shoes and socks off and do the counting and figure it out. D to D just pays them. I get my share. They send me a tax form. They pay everyone else. They get a tax form. I've done an anthology with 16 contributors. I haven't had to do anything other than publish the book, get everyone to agree to the terms and D mm -hmm. to D pays them every time the anthology sells. So what I've done with an anthology like that, Kay, is I take the, I take all the manuscripts myself because usually I'm editing them as well. Mm -hmm. I'll put them into a single document myself after I'm and and, and again, uh, I want this story first. I want this story second. I want, and I put them all in a single document. Then I upload them. Um, oh. And and it should, if I format it. And, and again, uh, if, if um, different authors, of course, are going to use different fonts and different styles and different formats, I may need to at the very least make sure that all of the, uh, title and author name header information mm -hmm. is at least consistent even if uh, someone used times new roman and someone else has used calibri and someone else uses Arial, it doesn't matter because when i use the templating in draft to digital 
it should automatically change that for me, uh, provided oh. that they're all the same font size, roughly, right? Like 12 points or something. So you may have mm -hmm. to do some basic formatting. Okay. But I would do the basic formatting anyway, because I'm I'm anal. Um, <laughs> I just want it all. I mean, I love Palantino Linotype. That's my favorite. Um, and I always go with that font. But Times New Roman or some standard font, I always like to have a standardized format. Because usually before I get ready to publish, I usually send it back to the um, um, the contributor so they can do the final proofread. Hey, you know, now that I've tweaked it and put it into a different format, why don't you guys proofread it now? Does that help? Yes, thank you. Um, I actually have been looking at romance, uh, like the actual fonts to see which ones are popular, but they, they know that I'll be changing it. So that's all uniform. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's your book, right? You're the publisher. So yeah, um, you should have final say. Mm -hmm. I mean, well, if anyone you. sends me a manuscript in Comic Sans, I'm going to reject it automatically. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. So far, no one has sent me a comic. Yay! Show. Oh my God! Well, I don't think romance romance writers would would ever do that. Maybe yeah, horror. Never author. know. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. So, Mark, you're essentially saying, um, in general, for a traditional anthology, you would have your front matter for the entire book, not in each in front of each story, and no. then you have a standardized look to everything so it's cohesive like all the fonts yeah. and the drop yeah okay yeah so the, and, and and a trick there Kay and this is thank you for uh clarifying that Heather because I forgot I forgot about that front matter uh stuff is um the automatic copyright page may not and I don't know because I I haven't used that for formatting I did the formatting myself for an anthology but uh I I like to on, a, on an anthology say you know copyright obsessions by Mark Leslie, the anthology. And then on the copyright page have the name of the story copyright by Christine Catherine Rush. And then the name of the story copyright by Julie Strauss and the name of the story copyright by, so that the copyright page has me having the copyright for the anthology, but all the copyrights for all the authors. Uh, and that may be something, and I have not played with that. I'm, I probably should, I should experiment with it in D2D just to see if it does it for you. Or if you would have to actually upload your own copyright page there. Um, mm -hmm. The one anthology question. I'm in has like um, just the name of the, the name of the story and the name of the author on the page where the story begins. It's almost right. like a chapter heading, yeah. but everything else is at the front and the back of the book. Yeah. And, and that's usually where at the front, I like to have that listing. Does that, does that help Kay McCoy? I hope that helps. That that's great, actually, because everyone has been submitting their their table of contents, and I thought it was great that they did that. And then I realized I don't think draft to digital will allow this. So, well, I mean, unless like a table of contents for just a short story. Yeah. Um, I mean, because, is that because yeah. their story is broken into like little mini chapters? In the mini chapters, yeah, because okay. it is that's just their their style. And there's eight of us so far. Six of them have done this, so. and that's fine. And that's fine. I've seen it done. What I would do is in the formatting of each story, <laughs> make sure that the little like if they do one or two or whatever they do for little headers in those chapter breaks. I'm reading an anthology right now by Jonathan Maybury that has. Uh, one of the one of the st stories has like one and then you know a few paragraphs or whatever, then two and then and it was all broken down into like 13 parts or whatever um make sure those little headers in the formatting of each of those stories is smaller or in a different style than the full chapter because you don't want the stupid computer to assume you know cool story by awesome author and then and then you see a, a chapter break where they get to chapter uh like the, the chapter in the story right the subsection you mm -hmm. don't want you don't want it to break there okay. you want it to break on second awesome story by the other, other awesome author right that's where you want the chapter break to happen if that makes sense so the content then would be like the um just like part of the story itself yeah story on. by author story by author and then any of the any of the little breaks within the stories aren't in the main epub are not considered part of the chapter breaks if that makes sense 
that would just make it too confusing in my opinion i don't think i don't think a reader a reader just reading page paging through a book isn't even going to notice but i'm (laughs) i'm anal about that stuff yeah and and because a few of them have also added dedications too so i wasn't sure oh that that's the main thing they they added dedication so i wasn't sure if i should just that's i've uh, so you know what i've seen that done Uh, that's a tough one because everyone wants to dedicate it to someone they love yeah some of the it's their first time yeah. being published so of course oh, naturally they want to make a small dedication and in the beginning I said sure why not and now yeah. that I'm in draft to digital I'm strongly reconsidering my stance on that um I guess you can have you you can compile them all and say <laughs> Mark Leslie dedicates this like Mark like dedications Mark Leslie to oh. Okay. You know, yeah. dedicates to Ooh. my favorite puppy dog or whatever, like all the, all the different dedications. But again, I would control that yourself. Um, yeah. yeah. I, I, I like that much better. <laughs> yeah. Or, I mean, you, it could be at the beginning of each story. That's up to you. It's, it's a stylistic choice as the editor that you can make. Okay. Well, you draft to digital already has a dedication section. So I think that would just make my brain happier. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So nicely organized. Great questions. Thank yeah. you. Thank you so much. Does anybody else, if you have a question, please unmute and I'll know that you have a question. Um, If nobody does, I want to ask about, and you can unmute. I'll pay attention to see if anybody has suddenly has a question, just unmute and I'll call on you. But um, uh, Mark, tell me a little bit more about Reedsy. It sounds like it's part, now maybe I misunderstood some of it, but it sounds a little bit like it's part um formatting but also part like a author publishing yeah, social media yeah. platform in a way so reedsy uh is a european company now ricardo is one of the co-founders uh that i know because i see him at all the conferences and um and and reedsy.com is meant to be a platform to find professionals to work with who have been curated and you can find professional uh editors and uh, formatters, like actual book formatters, cover designers, uh, marketing support, social media, all the different elements that you may, (laughs) excuse me, Um, people uh, in the the book industry, pardon me, sorry. Okay, Um, sorry. (laughs) You can't get onto Reedsy unless you've been uh, curated. Okay, so and not the authors, but yeah. the but the editors. Yeah, so the authors the will go looking stuff. for. Um, so, for example, um, I think in the screenshot you saw this 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 one editor had worked for Penguin Random House, had done freelance work for them or whatever. Um, so not just anyone can hang up the shingle on Reedsy and say, "Hey, look, I'm an expert." So, if you want to be a professional on Reedsy, you actually have to submit your, you know, your uh, resume. <clears throat> and they will pardon me and they will um vet you so anyone that you find on reedsy is is gonna be a professional and you can find people that charge ridiculously high amounts of money mm-hmm. and you can find but what you do is you put in uh like an rfp and you can say hey i'd like to work with mark and he knows how to do this thingy so uh here's what i'm looking for you to do what would it cost me right and then and then uh, you can do that with like five or six different people. And then they all come back to you and you can kind of, kind of, you know, do a bit of back and forth with them. Uh, but Reedsy also has, uh, while they were doing this and building this platform, they thought, oh, okay, let's build a tool uh, free online uh, so you can make an EPUB. So. Now, back in the day when I, um, uh, switching subjects when when I first published my first book back in like 2015 um the best and I think you um so the best way that I was able to format my book which was very basic was through Smashwords Meat Grinder yes. um the um I had so much trouble with the Amazon one I just couldn't make it work and all I had to do was run it through the Smashwords one and everything worked great yeah um, so, but the formatting has come a long way since then. It has, it has. And I mean, Smashwords is now part of the D2D family. And the meat grinder is being retired from smashwords.com. It's still there if you have a Smashwords account, but it's being incorporated into D2D. 
because there are people who love the meat grinder and they've been using it since 2012 or whatever <laughs> when it very first came out now again using the meat grinder in my my opinion it's hard like i had to i had to go and reformat my entire manuscript <laughs> just for just for the meat grinder and, and i stopped from from back then it was easy though because there's oh, was easy no then. other thing that did as good a job hmm. I had to hand code HTML in the early days. So yeah, Smashwords was a, was a godsend. But uh, for, for anyone who's using the meat grinder and loves it, draft digital is incorporating the meat grinder into draft digital So you can use draft digital formatting or you can go, hey, let me use the meat grinder instead. <laughs> so that way people who people, love it can people still get use used it. to something or maybe they yep. don't update their technology a lot or they have their files yeah. or old or whatever. Hey, if, if, but if you're that. comfortable with it, why change, right? Yeah, yeah. And hey, but I like um, using it this way, yeah. And the draft, the digital, I just really love that. <laughs> I had not no, seen that before. The, the walkthrough of each section, because I know that I forget things or I am like, you're in a hurry maybe or whatever, yeah. but it just was like, this is what a professional book looks like. We're going to have, I feel like draft to digital does its best to help. I'm going to sound like a draft to digital salesperson. Um, <laughs> I feel like they do their best. Um, your company does its best to make your indie published self published work look professional and yeah. as close to trad published which whether we like it or not is the standard um it's, you know, it's the book industry standard why wouldn't we follow it and no you're, you're right heather the whole goal the reason draft digital was created was okay i got a manuscript it's great um it's edited everything's good to go how do i publish it what do i do and the whole idea is you don't you shouldn't have to know all these things Okay, yeah, you don't need, no, we, we'll get an ISBN for you. Don't worry about it. Oh, oh, you need a dedication? Just click this button. We'll insert one for you. Just tell us what you want to dedicate it to, right? So that's the whole idea. Now, people like me have been in the industry for 30 years. I don't want all that stuff. I just want to load my PDF and Bob's your uncle, right? right. But if I need it, it's there. And so the beauty is, is that as a beginner, you can kind of come in and go, oh, table of contents, never thought of that. Or never thought of uh, the title page. Oh, shit, maybe I should put one in, yeah. right? Great, that's fantastic. But then other people is like, no, no, I already got that stuff. I don't need it. Thank you. Um, I love that. I love that it can cater to the, the first-time writer who has never done this before. And it just hopefully makes them feel a little less overwhelmed. I know it's very overwhelming for yeah. uh, first-timers. Um, actually, it's very overwhelming no matter how long you've been doing it. Yeah, no, I was going to say not even first time. I get overwhelmed still. <laughs> yeah, same. Okay. I mean, I'm I'm editing an audio book right now. I'm listening back from my, my narrators and, oh my God, it, it's just it's so much work. It is. And, and I'm like, yay, I'm on chapter eight and there's only 30 chapters to go, right? <laughs> and anything that can make it a little easier, I feel it I, like draft digital does that it helps make yeah. it easier and it streamlines the process um if you if you want to use it and do it that way well um does anybody if nobody has any questions i'm gonna let mark go early um because i feel like he the presentation gave us all that we needed and um if you don't have any questions i can um i can just uh give our salutations <laughs> Anybody, last call for a question about book formatting or Hope draft to digital? Answer. Any question about yeah. draft to digital, he can answer. Yeah, I'm happy to answer anything. Um, okay. Anything related to ebooks and digital publishing, if you want, since you guys are here. Yeah, if if anybody has any questions, and it doesn't look like it. okay. So um, I want to tell everybody that. Um, oh, uh, thank you, Courtney. Um, that. Uh, just so you know, Mark recently published um, and released the Canadian Mounted, a very tongue-in-cheek uh, novel that is that has the same cover as a book that was on the Planes, Trains, and Automobiles movie. So if you watch that at Christmas time, it's that time of year to watch that movie if you're a fan. Um, oh, you're welcome, Miko. Um, the uh, the book is full of trivia from that movie. Right, it's one of your favorite. No adult content in the. In no the, adult. Except, it looks like it has there's, adult there's this scene in the car rental agency where Steve Martin uses the f word seven, eighteen times. 
in in 60 seconds so there is that adult content but there's no adult content like you might suspect based on the cover yeah the cover <laughs> sort of makes it look like there is but it's just a fun nod to the movie and um it has trivia in there so um that might be a fun thing to have at christmas time to um throw around the room when you have a christmas party <laughs> um so you can find him at marklesley.ca and online on Instagram and TikTok and where else, Mark? Oh, I mean, you just look for me online. I'm pretty much everywhere. And and his <laughs> all that info is on his website. So it's all on yeah, marklesley.ca. I do recommend you take a peek at his um, author books. Um, very useful. So thank you. And so you much. can get them at your local library in print or ebook. Some of them are available in audiobook as well. And if you ask for them at the library, that helps me too. There you go. And um, so I do, I have his, I follow his newsletter. I um, I recommend signing up for his newsletter as well, which you can also do through his website. So thank you so much, everybody. Have a good evening. I'm going to say goodbye to you all. I'm going to stay on with Mark for a minute um, and, and say goodnight. Um, let me turn off the recording. <laughs>